Hello my YouTube family. Today is Saturday, July 31st and it's 12.50 p.m. Alright, this is a, a little teaching and I'm going to do based on video that our sister Rose sent to me. Um, let's see here. I got to, I, I need to pull that tab up and tell you a little bit about this. This young lady's name is Rachel. I'm not sure if I'm saying it right, but it's Rachel. I got to turn this down. Mushella Chisula. Chisulo. Okay, now let me check my position. Okay. There's a little bit of a glare on here. So, anyway, it's called Woman of God in Hell for Worldliness by Rachel Mushala Chisulo from January of 2018 and it still pertains to today. Alright? Um, she starts off by telling you how she um, she when she first at midnight, lay, went to bed, laid her head on the pillow, and then immediately found herself in hell. And she could see uh, the, she, she, she sounds like she's from Africa because she pronounces the pit as peat. And she kept saying peat, and I'm like, what's a peat? And I finally figured it out. She's saying pit. Okay, so... Excuse me. <laughs> okay. I'm alright, Jasper. I just sneezed. <laughs> when he sneezes, it's just a little... <laughs> it's real soft. So he doesn't understand when I make these noises I do. <laughs> anyway, let's get on to this. She finds this person trying to reach up like she sees her as if like help me and she's grab she sees her grabbing on to something and reaching reaching high she can see her hand like this so she knows it's a woman and she finally realizes she gets high enough that this young lady here realizes the woman in the pit is a holy woman of god that actually mentored her and gave, well, gave her some, uh, what did she call it, rebuke, warnings, advice, something from the Lord, she said. All right, so why did this woman find herself in hell? All right, that's what this teaching is about, because I don't want this to happen to any of you. All right, um, she has scriptures in box, in a box, and as, as the video goes on, some fall off and more at, are added. So, I've pulled up several that I'm going to go over. The first one is in Zephaniah 1.8, when the Lord is warning um, His people about their clothing. Then it will come about on the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes, the king's sons, and all who clothe themselves with foreign garments. So you can just imagine, if you know anything about how they dressed in the east, the eastern, shiny, silky, very costly garments, if they came to the Middle East and sold them to the king's sons so they could be all shiny and look like royalty also, that displeased the Lord. Okay, we'll move on to the New Testament. This is, sorry, called Dedicated Service. Now this is the NASB for now. Romans 12, 1 says, Therefore, I urge you, brethren, 
by the mercies of God to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. I'm going to go ahead and read number two, verse two. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. All right. Now, none of us are going to be perfect but we're always supposed to be striving for that so that each day when you mess up, oh, Lord, I'm so sorry I shouldn't have said that. Please forgive me. Maybe you won't do that again for a while. We're human. We're working for it, okay? All right, let me move on. I could read more, but I've got more to share. This one is 1 Corinthians 6. I have this blown up. It's just the glare. On, I have one of those protectors, and it increases the glare when the sun's out. I'm starting to come around, so forgive me if I have to keep moving my position. For 1 Corinthians 6, 19. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God. You have this body, this temple, okay, and you received it from God. A uh, footnote says, and hold on, or God, question mark, and you own and you are not your own. Okay, I get it. The, the Probably the King James Version puts it that way. But it, this is almost the same. Let me rephrase. Oh, Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have, it should say which, which you have from God? And that you are not your own, for you have been bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. What a heavy price Jesus paid. He bought us with his life so that anybody who would receive him and commit to him and love him and Father, and the Holy Spirit, all three, want to serve Him, want to treat others as if they were Him. We're given this body for Him to live in. When we commit to Him, He comes inside via the Holy Spirit. That's why I don't understand. It's so clear to me in the Bible. Why does people not want anything to do with the Holy Spirit? Or the gifts? Or praying in tongues? Why? Because they're churches. We don't do that here. For you have been bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body. That's 1 Corinthians 6. 19 and 20. Moving on. This is... Okay, what happened? Maybe I, got, I had to blow it up. Okay, here it is. Uh, subtitle, Women Instructed. Now, this can go for men, too. Because, men, you got to watch the tightness of your britches as much as women got to watch the lowness of their blouses and the height of their skirts. You get my point? And wearing Spanx with a short top? Not good. Or whatever they're called. Leggings? You know what I mean. They show way too much. 
and those should only be worn with tunics, those little, like a mini dress that covers their behind. Okay, let me get on to this. First Timothy 2 9. Likewise, I want women to adorn themselves with proper clothing, modestly and discreetly, not with braided hair and gold or pearls or costly garments. Now, I don't know what the braided hair back then meant, if it was like they did it up in such a fancy way. It was, I don't think that God would mind at all if I could. I'm about to trim this, so I may get a little more than I like, but uh, it's, if I braided my hair, let's say, into two pigtails, that's the best way I would be able to do it. I know that would not be a problem. But there's evidently was a way that women braided their hair, perhaps with fine gold threads throughout it. I don't know. But it, in some way to make themselves more beautiful, uh, to look more wealthy, whatever, more attractive. That's what he doesn't want. And gold or pearls or costly garments, okay? It says, but rather by means of good works, as is proper for women, making a claim to godliness. Are you claiming to be godly? but not thinking you need to do good works. This is 1 Timothy 2, 9 and 10. You better read it and learn it. A woman must quietly receive instruction with entire submissiveness. Now, this is when you're married to a man who's living right. He's godly. He's the head of the household. He loves his wife the way Jesus loves the church. Men are instructed to love their wives the way Jesus loves the church. That's when you, you are to be totally submissive. And not to a man like I was married to that was... Part of my testimony first husband. I was 18. He wanted me to do things with others so he could watch. And I was totally submissive. And that was way wrong. Just telling you. Is it any wonder I had demons? I stayed with him seven years. Got two beautiful girls out of it. Anyway, that's all I have to say about that. But that's what I wanted to share with you because this entire submissiveness is relative. If your husband does not even love God as much as you, you remain submissive to the Lord because he doesn't know how. Let me move on. All right, this is 1 Peter 3, verse 3 and 4. No, and 5. This is very similar, but I had to go to King James for this because I'll tell you why. The first verse I read here is verse, uh, 1 Peter 3, 3. Whose adorning, let it not be that outward, NASB added, merely outward adorning. In other words, you can go ahead and adorn your hair and wear golden, but also verse 4 goes into verse 4. So I said, wait a minute. Over here it says, don't braid your hair or wear gold or put on fancy apparel. But now it's saying, don't just merely outwardly adorn yourself, but inwardly do so also. So I went to the King James Version, and it takes out the word merely. So that's one of the faults of the NASB. 
But as a rule, I find it easier to read and I like it better for the reason I stated earlier. You just have to see I learned the, uh, the King James first and it's flawed also. Okay, 1 Peter 3.3 3, Whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning of plating they're calling it plating the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel let's look that up plating I'd like to know because the NASB said braiding outward plating it's 1708 in the Greek and it means I wish their fonts were darker um, plating oh and interweaving braiding a knot two an elaborate gathering of one's hair into knots see that it's got to mean number two because uh, elaborate braiding of the hair yeah down under strong's definition where it gives the Greek word and then E M P I O K E with a mark over it employee and pluck and pluck a from Greek 1707 elaborate braiding of the hair plating okay see the difference in that versus a plain old braid okay um, someone tried to teach me how to French braid my children's hair I just couldn't get it and it was a lot prettier and I don't know if that if there was weren't any knots involved but it was a lot prettier anyway um, so don't plait your hair <laughs> Oh, tie it up in pretty knots <laughs> and a wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel uh, being this is the King James putting on of apparel see there should be an adjective there costly apparel he does, he's got to wear clothes verse 4 but let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit which is in the sight of God of great price it's your heart he wants to see decorated with love so to speak okay clothed in love and meekness and humility Verse 5, for after this manner in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands. I bet these brand new versions, I don't even know what they are, don't have that in there. Subjection to husbands or submission. Like I said, remember what I said already, uh, only if your, your husband loves God first and loves you the way Jesus loves the church. All right, let's move on. The next verse is James 4.4. 4. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Yep, it sure is. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Boy, I could read the whole thing, you know, <laughs> I just don't want to make it too long but you can write these down if you want from the little thing on the video and 
do your own personal study if you think you have a problem in any of these areas. I mean, it's kind of repetitive, but that's how important it is to God that he had the Holy Spirit pen this through Paul or whoever. Now, this one's Matthew. Because um, it was important to him that we don't look like the world wearing the latest fashion. And I'm, there's, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with wearing a gold chain. Like you might like to wear a cross. A sim keep it simple and not gaudy. That's the word I was looking for earlier. Gaudy. Keep your jewelry simple. It, he does, you know, I, I wear this, I bought this because I'm engaged to Jesus and I wanted a ring on this finger. The gold plating is kind of wearing off, but I got the best I could afford at the time about 10 years ago. The stones are holding out. But anyway, I know this makes him happy because it tells guys, I'm taken. You know, if they, if you have a ring on your left ring finger, that should mean you're taken. That's not where you put a casual ring. I've seen women have rings all the way across both fingers. That's just gaudy and disgusting. And that's what he's talking about. Wear one at a time. All right, Matthew 7.13. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. A tree and its fruit. This is verse 15. This one's a long, uh, 10 verses. Beware of false prophets who, which come to you in sheep's clothing. That's like your preachers of today. But inwardly they are ravening wolves. Look how many have told people that the you know what is okay. It is not the you know what mark go ahead and take it we must do our civic duty ye shall know them by their fruits do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles even so every good tree bringeth forth good fruit but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. It's just so sad. It's so sad. How many? I know. But I would have called a good Christian. I will not be there. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity.
Why would he say that? How could they cast out demons in his name? How can they do many wonderful works? And yet Jesus said, I never knew you. Never. I think that's a bad translation. It should be worded just like the parable of the ten virgins. In verse 13, Matthew 25, 13 says, Truly I say unto you, I do not know you. And he shut the door in their face. The last one. Hebrews 12, 14. Follow peace with all men and holiness. Wait a minute, did I? I thought I had another one. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Okay. Oh, yeah, there's one down here. What is it, 19? That was 19. That was 14. Hey, Jasper. Jasper. It's not highlighted. It's there was two. Jasper. Stop. Jasper. Stop. Hebrews. Let me go back up here to Hebrews. 12 and see if it pulls it up. Hebrews 12. Okay, 14 shows up, but the second one. Jasper, it's okay, baby. It's okay. Stop barking like that. They're not going to hurt us. We're good. We're good, baby. We're safe. Okay, it was for, for our God is a consuming fire. Okay, I, I know there was another one from Hebrews. It talked about holiness for nothing unholy will enter into the kingdom of God. But yet, the link's not here. So, I guess... I don't know what happened, but anyway, it, it, it was, be therefore holy, or no, anyway, we have to be holy, we have to live a holy life, the whole summation of this is, live right, dress right, let others see your light shine before them, so Although that verse was not in here. It's mainly talking about if you're a godly woman, you should look the part. Do not look like you're of the world. Stop dressing like the world. Stop thinking you need the latest outfit, the most stylish hat, the most stylish jewelry, fancy nails. Get rid of the nail polish. Light very light. I don't think he would mind, but some of these people work. We would have been sent home if we'd have showed up to care for patients with nails sticking out to here, painted purple and black and blue, and boy, times have changed. I was a nurse, if you all don't know. You, 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 you handle old older folks with skin that's like tissue paper with these long nails you're gonna slice it I just can't believe they let them get away with it but they kind of have to I guess because it's their culture maybe I don't know but I, I wish I'd have had that other verse pulled up but I don't but it's okay because I gave you plenty Live holy and look holy. I'm going to type it in because I got to know.
holiness dot 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 without which here it is it's Hebrews twelve fourteen. what oh it's the whole page Hebrews twelve fourteen through 29 okay hold on a minute now how come I can't open that up uh, no I'm not upgrading I don't usually use Bible Gateway Hebrews twelve fourteen through 29. All right, let me see if I can find it. I don't know how to make this one bigger. Um, follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Okay, did I say that? I didn't think I did. Okay, I'm just going to end it here. I don't want to flounder now. Because uh, I prayed the Holy Spirit would help me to present this in a way that would be acceptable. And that it would teach you and help you to not end up in hell like this other woman. That was a godly woman. How many godly people are going to end up in hell because of things like this? Maybe she was warned and she didn't obey. Perhaps... She told other girls like this one who did the video this very same stuff. I know of another video. It's been a few years ago that a woman said she her, uh, she went to hell. Not as a observer, but she died and went to hell. Either it was an NDE or it was a, 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 a dream. It could have been a vision. But she was there in hell because she piled on the makeup and dyed her hair, wore the jewelry and the cost of clothing. And she was told, was allowed to come back if she, if she died or came back from the dream. Whatever. The message was, stop wearing makeup. And does that mean, excuse me, all makeup? What about a little cheek blush if you look pale? I think that's okay. But you can really overdo it with the eyeshadow and the eyelashes and the mascara and the eyeliner and darken your brows because, oh, I just, see, I don't hardly have any. I have a lot of them or did have. I pluck them all the time because they're thick, but they're so light you can't see them anyway. Anyway, the point is, Simplicity equals humility. You're not trying to stand out in the crowd and attract the other people's attention. You know what I mean, ladies. Now, guys don't tend to wear makeup and plate their hair. <laughs> but you can do other things, you know, to try to be very attractive. Don't worry about, you know, take care of your health. But don't get a six-pack in your ab and then wear a tight shirt. That's just as bad. It's trying to draw attention to your outer self. That's the point. Be holy on the inside. Be pleasing to the Lord. Let everything you do... Hold on, I'm recording. Let everything you do be done with faith and as unto the Lord. Alright, I plead the blood of Jesus over this video, over the internet connections, and over each and every one of us. And with that, I'll say bye for now. Talk to you later.